when f four quick for you, you don't have to answer quickly, but four uh, remaining questions that the best ever listeners wanted to ask you. Um, one is from Slocum, and you're going to like this, by the way. He asks, what feature of the Bigger Pockets platform does Josh think is most underutilized? I don't like this. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> the most underutilized feature on the platform, I would have to say, is member notes. And I, I, as Joe nods his head up and down, wondering <laughs> like, what the what? hell I'm talking about. Um, so here, here's what member notes are. You can go to anybody's profile and take a note on them. So like I can Joe, go to your profile, Joe, and make a note and say like, yeah, Joe and I on August 28th had a conversation about X, Y, and Z. Only I can see it. Nobody else can see it on the platform. And it allows me, yeah, it's almost like a mini CRM, right? The next time I come back and I next time I interact with you, I could be like, oh yeah, hey Joe, yeah. You know, remember we talked about X, Y, and Z the last time we connected? Um, Look, I think partially that's due to people not knowing what it is. I think we we, we have not updated that in a very, very long time. Um, we are working on um, some really nice and, and sexy uh, redesigns of, of certain parts of the site, including user profiles and our onboarding. Um, and as part of that, I think we're going to be creating a little more clarity in that tool. Um, but I think it's I think it's extremely useful. I use it all the time. So you know, I, I talk to you about whatever I talk to you about. I put it on there, and and next time I come back and I'm ready to talk to you again, I know exactly what we chatted about. I am on your profile right now on my me member notes section, writing in Jerry Springer. That's that's great. That's great. <laughs> way to way to torture me, man. That's, All right, this. That's really the, nice of you, Joe. <laughs> this one's from, and I, I, so clearly I don't want to, I don't want to know what you're writing about me right now. <laughs> All right. This what is from, a jerk. <laughs> this is from Julie and this implies something. So if, if the implication is not accurate, then forget the question. Sure. When you were considering starting bigger pockets, what was your number? What was a number one fear holding you back from starting? There was no fear that held me back from starting, which is what you were getting yep. to. I, when I started the site, I, I wasn't, I didn't start bigger pockets to create a business. I, I started bigger pockets to help me stop screwing up in real estate. Um, so my biggest fear was continuing to screw up in real estate. <laughs> and, and so, um, yeah, there was nothing that was kind of like, all right, well, if I create this thing and nobody shows up, then nobody shows up. I'll figure something else out. I'll mm -hmm. find my answers in some other way, but yeah. Um, Evan, yeah. Evan H has a question about podcasting and how that has enhanced your business and open up doors and connections that you wouldn't have had otherwise. So, um, you know, podcasting. Just, yeah. in the, the BP podcast. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think it, I think by having a show, a big show that, has a big audience it gives you the ability and as you well know to talk to and reach out to people who you may not have all, had the opportunity to do that with um and and so it builds your name it builds your brand um and especially if you do a good job and you know stay true to who you are and what you're doing then um ideally that continues so um look i I've gotten to talk to authors that I may not have otherwise met. I've gotten to, um, I don't know, just, just getting to talk to, you know, even you when you came on the show, like there's not a show that we have where I don't learn something. And, and so for me as a person um, not affiliated with bigger pockets, it's, it's so powerful. And as the CEO of bigger pockets, um, you know, obviously having those people and those stories inspire other people is, is also so powerful. So um, I don't know. The, the, look, we, we did the podcast on, I'm going to say a lark, is, which is not true, but I, it's funny. I, I look back uh, in the past couple of months and I came across a note um, that I had written to myself years before I even started the podcast. And one of the things I had written down was, you know, start, start a podcast. Um, 
and it was I never did it because you know there wasn't much of an audience the technology wasn't as pervasive and 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 so never did it but when Brandon came on we're like hey this maybe this will catch on maybe people will uh, like the medium um, for the dissemination of real estate information in a way that is not already being disseminated by other people um, let's let's give it a shot and and what we found is that people do in fact like what we do and how we do it i mean there are people who absolutely hate us but you know there's people who hate you too and you're you're a really nice guy so you know there's a, you know you can't worry about that you just got to got to do the show that you believe is the right show and and that's what we do and i your podcast has influenced my life personally in many ways both as a listener and then also a guest a uh, one email I received after being a guest on the Bigger Pockets podcast, and it was actually just, uh, it was probably about two and a half months after being on the podcast. It was an email from a, a fund that has over $1 billion worth of assets under management saying that they would like to talk to us, uh, myself and my business partner, about creating a fund of $100 million investing in our projects. And last week, I was actually in Dallas touring uh, with them, our properties in DFW, uh, talking to them about creating a fund. And it was because the woman who heads up the fund, her niece is a listener to the Bigger Pockets podcast. And since uh, the, the woman who I met with, she listens as well now. And it was all because of being on the show. That's awesome, man. That's great. Well, cool. When you start that fund, you know, I'll take my one, 1% <laughs> and, and we'll be good. Last question. Wow. No answer there. Just <laughs> moving on to the next question. Yeah. I'm going to ignore that as much as I can. Again. I'll buy you a beer when I come to, the, come to Denver uh, this February. This is from Taylor L. And he asks, what are your morning routines or daily practices that uh, you do on a regular basis? Um, so I, I go back and forth with a miracle morning or non miracle morning routine. I, um, depends how spent or burnt out I am, but I like, I like getting up. I like stretching. Um, I like before I ever, okay. So I don't ever get up and then go to my phone or go to the internet or, or, or anything like that. I like to get up. I like to stretch. Um, uh, on on the good mornings, I like to go and exercise. Um, this is all before anyone else in the house is awake. Um, and then, you know, get up, get dressed, do my do my thing, take care of my kids, get them ready to school, drive them to school, and then at that point, I will look at work. Um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't do work before my kids are off to school. I'm there. I'm present. Um, you know, I'm not playing on my phone, stressing about emails, dealing with any of that stuff. It's morning is for me, followed by family. And then I had to work and then work begins. Um, uh, after work, when I get home, four, five, six o'clock, whenever it is, um, I'm present. Again, phone's away, um, not working. I may jump on social media from time to time because it's a hobby, but I'm not kind of doing work per se. Um, until my kids are asleep. Mm -hmm. um, family time is family time. Um, and then uh, when the kids go to bed, you know, I usually like to thaw for a little bit and then um, maybe I'll do some work as needed. But uh, it's very different than, you know, had you asked that question three years ago, which would have been, or four years ago, which would have been, I get up, I work, you know, I take a shower. I work some more while my kids are getting fed or whatever. And then I, I leave to work and then I come home and I work and then I work through dinner. And then after dinner, I continue to work. And even though I'm with my family, I'm not there. Um, mm -hmm. And I came to the realization that I was doing that and hated myself, um, mm -hmm. really, really hated myself for it. And, you know, said this, this is just not who I want to be. I, I, I am a, father first and foremost and my family is the most important thing to me in my life and so I'm not going to let anything especially my company 
get in between that. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's it. And, and on, on those good mornings when I'm fully kind of miracle morning in, I don't actually do the full miracle morning, which refers to a book called the miracle morning by Hal Elrod. Uh, for those of you who don't know, but I'll do, I'll stretch, I'll do some meditation. Um, I'll do some exercise and, um, I'll do some reading. So, um, those tend to be the four things that I do. Imparting words for the best ever listeners. What's your best real estate investing advice ever? Uh, I would say figure out your why. Mm. What, what is it that you're getting into this for? And, um, if you don't have a strong why, then, then you're not ready to, to, to begin. And if you're already an investor and you're thinking about scaling your business or growing your business, what's the why? What's driving you? What's motivating you? Because if you don't have it, you know who's not going to have it? Your partner, your spouse, your family. So you better have a solid why that everybody can buy into um, because otherwise, you know, there's, there's going to be opposition at, at every step from those people who should be supporting you. Mm-hmm. So I think that would be, uh, that would probably be the first best piece of advice I would offer. How can the best ever listeners learn more about what you're doing and either get in touch with you or learn more about your company, get involved? Sure. So, uh, bigger pockets, just go to biggerpockets.com. You can check it out. We've got the bigger pockets podcast. Uh, you can find it on iTunes, YouTube, wherever else podcasts are found. Um, we, uh, um, you know, go on the site, play around, look around. Um, there's just unbelievable amounts of information and uh, to, to help you out. Um, beyond that, you know, for me personally, I don't necessarily connect with people I don't know um, off of bigger pockets. Um, I would say follow me on Twitter um, at J.R. Dorkin. That's at J-R-D-O-R-K-I-N. You should follow Bigger Pockets at Bigger Pockets. Um, but uh, yeah, until I really get to know somebody, I don't tend to do the like Facebook or LinkedIn mm-hmm. or, or other connections. It's just, it would be impossible and unwieldy for me to do that. So, you know, give me a shout on Twitter, you know, and uh, yeah. And yeah, and I, I can tell you that you should definitely follow him on Twitter if you want to continue to see uh, the insect eating um, that, that he yes. regularly does at the Butterfly Pavilion. No oh boy. In, De- <laughs> in Denver. Well, hey, Josh, thank you for being on the show from talking about the overall approach that you take uh, to business and how to build a company. I mean, the, the process or the things that we need to pay attention to when we build a company, have the idea, have the plan, have the, make sure we're solving something with a unique selling proposition, be passionate, have dedication to our people and know our business from a data standpoint. I mean, that right there is the blueprint for creating not only a real estate investing company, but just a company in general. Um, Also from a, you know, speaking to, you're speaking to a bigger pockets member And I am now going to start using the member notes section. So best ever listeners, go check out the member notes section. Sounds like really cool feature. Um, And from a, just from a um, overall entrepreneurship and mindset standpoint, I noticed one thing that you honed in on uh, when you were talking about, you know, your overall vision and it's not the, um, not asking, not saying I can't do something or I don't have access it's how do we do something and really coming at it from a um, abundance mentality and a solutions oriented mentality um, which as an entrepreneur um, a true entrepreneur would do Uh, and then the family style interview I mean culture is incredibly important it's obvious to you and how much emphasis you put in that and and uh, don't bring any drama to you that's that's, no drama don't, don't bring no drama No drama. Um, So thanks for being on the show, Josh. Hope you have a best ever day. Enjoyed it. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Joe. Take care.